In this example, we're going to be finding the inverse of a quadratic function. So we have g of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 3. And the domain has been restricted to x is bigger than or equal to negative 1, so that we're working with a 1, 1 function. In the first part of the question, we need to find the range of g. That will be straightforward enough if we complete the square to find the minimum point. We can now see the quadratic has a minimum at minus 1, 2. And so the range is g of x is bigger than or equal to 2. In part b, we want the greatest possible domain of the inverse function. Well, we know that the domain of the inverse function is the same as the range of the original function. In part A, we've already found the range of the original function, so that will be helpful. So the domain of the inverse function contains the same values as the range of the original function. So we have x is bigger than or equal to 2. Notice that in the original function for the range, I had g of x, but when I write a domain, I just have x. In part C, we need to state the range of the inverse function. This one's nice and straightforward because the range of the inverse function contains the same values as the domain of the original function. So we can simply write down the range of g to the minus 1 is g to the minus 1 of x is bigger than or equal to negative 1. In part D, we need to find the inverse function. Our start point when we find any inverse function is to let y equal the original function. Then we rearrange to make x the subject. If you've not done one of these before, this can be quite tricky because you can't simply factorize x. To make it so that x only appears once, all we need to do is complete the square, which we've already done in part A. From here, we can rearrange to make x the subject. Now that we've made x the subject, we can write down our inverse function. However, at this point, we need to be really careful about how we deal with this plus or minus. I've written it in red at the moment because this isn't actually the inverse function. If we put a value in for x, we're going to get two outputs, a plus root x minus 2 and a minus root x minus 2, which means we wouldn't actually have a function. So what we need to do next is decide, do we want the plus or do we want the minus? Conveniently, the range of the inverse function is the same as the domain of the original function. So we need to get values out of this function that are bigger than or equal to minus 1. It should be pretty obvious which one to use because square roots will always give answers that are 0 or greater. So if we use the minus sign here, we'd be doing minus 1 minus something. And that's clearly going to give us an answer that's less than minus 1. So in here, we need to have a plus. Let's add a domain on as well. And there is our inverse function. Right, here's a question for you to try for yourselves then. Pause the video and then come back and check your solution against mine. Welcome back, here's my solution then. In part A, we need to find the range of h of x. To do that, we complete the square. First, I'll pull a factor of 2 outside of the first two terms. And then I'll complete the square inside the square bracket. Expanding out the square brackets, we have 2 times minus 4 is minus 8. Take away 5 is minus 13. 
That tells us we have a minimum point at y equals minus 13. So the range of h of x is h of x is bigger than or equal to minus 13. In part b, we need to state the greatest possible domain of the inverse. The domain of the inverse is the same as the range of the original function. That was h of x is bigger than or equal to minus 13. So the domain of the inverse is x is bigger than or equal to minus 13. In part c, we need to state the range of the inverse function. Well, the range of the inverse function is simply the same as the domain of the original function. So we get h to the minus 1 of x is less than or equal to negative 2. Next, we need to find the inverse of h. So we'll start by saying let y equal our quadratic. We completed the square earlier. And then we can rearrange this to make x the subject. This means that our inverse function will be of the form minus 2 plus or minus square root of x plus 13 over 2. Let's consider whether we want the plus or minus. The range of the inverse is the same as the domain of the original. So we want outputs that are less than or equal to minus 2. We've got minus 2 plus or minus something. If we want the outputs to be less than minus 2, we want to have a minus in here. And we'll add a domain on, which is the range of our original function. x is bigger than or equal to minus 13.